That is the sound of some super good prata. It's one of Singapore's most beloved foods. But what you're looking at right now isn't prata, though you may have seen some dishes that look really similar. Not familiar? Then it's time to introduce you to prata's flatter, fluffier and crispier cousins. Trust us, your taste buds will thank you later. So what goes into all these different breads? Obviously, we had to find out from the experts. Hi, I'm Yogendran. I'm from Rajarani Tose. We specialise in Tose and Appams. My name is Shahid Javid. Where in Singapore can I get the best nut? <laughs> of course, at Osman Restaurant. <laughs> My name is Abuzar Alam. This is our family business, Admi Restaurant. In Singapore, well known restaurant at Chapati. So can you tell us what goes into your dish? Tose is a South Indian bread. Normally when we think of breads, we think of it traditionally uh, being made of wheat flour. But this is rice flour and it is fermented. It is a sourdough. Besides rice, uh, we also use black bean and fenugreek seeds uh, in the batter. These are all ground very finely and mixed up and left to ferment overnight. My grandma uh, initially owned the stall. My dad came into the picture and then he refined the recipe. In 2017, he passed away very suddenly. He had left us without the recipe. We didn't know <laughs> yeah, because it is not written down. <laughs> Through trial and error, we managed to bring it back to what it was. Naan is uh, baked bread that we freshly bake in the clay pot oven on the charcoal. There is a charcoal make that tastes different from any other bread. This is uh, normal white flour that we use some baking powders, baking soda, some milk, some salt inside the ingredients. We have to rise the dough for at least uh, two to three hours that make the bread more nicer. Our chapati is so soft and so famous. Uh, we need the wheat flour and water and nothing else. Some people they mix a little bit salt. Wheat is good for health, uh, good for heart patient, diabetes and blood pressure. Nowadays, uh, doctor uh, advise you take chapati. How is it cooked? Is there any special equipment involved? The cooking process for tose is uh, very much like crepes. You will spread the fermented batter thinly on a hot skillet until it's fully cooked and crispy. Make a normal dough ball that we flatten with our hands and just stick at the clay pot oven that's called tandoor. And it takes very short time to cook, maybe just two minutes, that's all. There's around 14 to 18 nuns we can cook at a time. After uh, we make dough with the iron round plate, it's called tawa. We put on tawa. Should be uh, 30 seconds. So, so big, big restaurant, but they cannot cook as uh, we are cooking. There's uh, some tricks to cook. What are these tricks? That is our secret, eh? Family secret, I can't yeah. say. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You can keep those delicious secrets. But you know what's not a mystery? These breads' history. To find out when and where they come oh, from... Oh, I know, I know. These are all Indian dishes. So obviously, the answer is India. Duh! Well, it's actually a little more complex than that. Let's start with the naan. Long before it popped up on any menus, it was mentioned in 1300 AD by an Indo-Persian poet. This guy noted that it was popular in Delhi's imperial courts during the Mughal Empire. So, if we're talking about the imperial court, that means mainly the nobles and ruling class, right? Yep. Yeast used to be quite an expensive ingredient which only wealthy people could afford. Plus, it needed to be, well, kneaded, meaning additional labour and involving more servants. TLDR, this was essentially a recipe reserved for royalty. So, ironically, there was none for the commoners back then. Well, luckily for us, nowadays naan is a lot more commonly available. But there are some special variations of this dish. There are a lot of types of naans. The plain naan, garlic naan, butter naan, cheese naan, cheese garlic naan, chilli garlic naan. Then we have uh, stuffed naan, stuffed with potatoes, stuffed with cheese. Wow, I lost count already. Then what about the different dishes itself with? Naan can go with any of the Pakistani and North Indian dishes. They are basic dishes of uh, butter chicken, chilli chicken, chicken kadai. Especially some Pakistani dishes that call Nihari, Alim. Then we have some mixed dishes, pepper prawns. So, if royals had none in the past, what about the average people? What did they eat? Well, this ancient encyclopedia might have something to say about the answer. Wow, very funny, are you? <clears throat> anyway, so this is a text from the 12th century which roughly translates to the delight of the mind. And it references a recipe that was likely a delight to the mouth, the dosaka, an older version of today's tose. The person who wrote this was actually a king whose territory covered parts of present-day Karnataka, a state in southwestern India. 
Yep, and this leads at least one historian to believe that Kanataka is the true birthplace of Tosei. So, we have an idea of where the Tosei originally came from. But are there other versions of the dish today? Normal variations in Tosei, normally you have plain Tosei, uh, masala Tosei, onion Tosei, egg Tosei. Those are the basic variations. Over here, I have egg and onion, uh, butter egg. Butter egg was one of my dad's creations. My dad also made something sweet that he calls crispy cereal Tosei. Yeah, I still have it on the menu. So I keep it there just to honour my, my dad's uh, memory. <laughs> He had a lot of ideas. Wow, it sounds like there's many different ways to eat tose. And what are these different coloured sauces? Uh, tose is usually paired with uh, dal, which is a vegetable lentil curry, chutneys, coconut chutneys, chilli and onion chutneys. Uh, some people have it with mint chutneys. Usually it's served with vegetarian curries and dishes. Now that the tose is all wrapped up, what about our last bread, chapati? Let's roll out a story. Chapati was actually popular amongst travellers. It was used like a spoon to scoop up sauces and other side dishes. Actually, what are some of those side dishes paired with chapati? Normally people like mutton kima, mutton masala and chicken masala. Unlike Singaporeans in 2020, the chapati has travelled a lot. Its popularity spread as far as the people who ate them. Since it's shifted around so much, it's hard to pinpoint an exact location for the chapati's origins. But there are claims that regions as distant as Egypt or East Africa had their own versions of chapati. However, one of the more frequently cited places is Southern India. Cited as in, in historical texts? Well, actually, chapati is not specifically mentioned throughout the ages because it's often interchangeable with the word roti, which is a more generic term for flatbread. But there is one in a 16th century record from the Mughal Empire. That's the empire whose territories covered parts of present-day Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and most of India. Oh, and chapati was actually a favourite snack of Emperor Akbar, one of the guys who ruled over all those places. After talking about all this food, quite hungry ah. Let's go research which of these will be our favourites. And if you're craving some Indian bread now, check out these places! Go for it, go for it. Come on, we need the high energy. Wow, that was a lot. To say. <laughs> Please, none of that. Anyways, thank you for watching our little homage to some of the popular Indian flatbreads here in Singapore. If you enjoyed watching this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and let us know in the comment section which is your favourite Indian flatbread. And if you have any suggestions on what other foods we should explore next, please also leave them down in the comment section below. Is that it? That's it. Okay, bye! bye. <laughs>